I was there. I was there. It was after 9-11. It was in early 2002. February 3rd, 2002, in the Louisiana Superdome. I was there. Tom Brady, the one they call the GOAT, Tom Brady, the one they call the GOAT, was a heavy underdog that day. The Rams were favored I, at least by it was either 11 or 14, I don't remember, something like that. And nobody expected what happened that day. The underdog won. <laughs> uh, David, with his slingshot, brought down Goliath. And thank God, ladies and gentlemen, if there's a Goliath in your life, if it's a Goliath of porn, if it's a Goliath of prescription drug, prescription drug addiction that it sounds like a rattlesnake because it's biting, it's biting, it's biting like a snake. If there's an addiction of alcohol and drinking, whatever. If there's a sickness and a disease that you can't overcome, the doctors can't cure, and maybe the doctor has said it's over. It's not over till it's over. Yogi Berra sang it. Uh, he didn't sing it, but he said it. It's not over till it's over. Hallelujah. And if you're going to spiritualize what Yogi Berra said, it's not over till the last trumpet sounds. It's not over till it's over. Not until that trumpet sounds. I want to tell you today, the last chapter of your life has not been written yet. Nobody said Brady could win that game. But but when the but when the kicker kicked it, when the kicker kicked it, and it sailed, and it sailed, and it went through the uprights all over New England, they were singing, We are the champion, my friend. <laughs> and we'll Keep on fighting till the end. You see, that's a champion. You fight until the end. You don't give up. Churchill, as England was facing the Battle of Britain, and as the Luwatha of Adolf Hitler was bombing and bombing and bombing, Winston Churchill stood up and flexed his shoulders, and he said to the people of England, Don't quit. Never give up. Finish strong. Finish strong. Folks, <laughs> I'm a Tom Brady admirer. But he's not the GOAT. He's not the GOAT. No man is the GOAT. <laughs> Donald Trump is not great. Nor can he make America great again or save America. You can say he was a good president. You can vote for him, fine. But don't worship a man. No man is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And God's Super Bowl was the cross. And on the cross, Jesus won. And Satan was defeated. And it was a blowout. So don't worry about tickets to the big game. Don't worry about tickets to the big game because they cost, they cost a lot of money. But you know what you need? Tickets to heaven. Tickets to heaven. And this world doesn't need a goat. This world needs the lamb. John the Baptist said, Behold, the lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. That's Jesus when he hung and bled and died for you and for me on Calvary's cruel cross of Golgotha. And that's the message that I have for TikTok today. The FYP page. FYP. FYP for you, for you, for you. It means Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. And when you follow evangelist Mike Dial, it's for you preaching. It's for you power. It's for you prayer. It's for you praise. It's for you purpose. It's for you provision. Hallelujah. Of what Jesus did 
on the cross. It's not about me, though. It's about Jesus and the only name that matters. And this life and the life beyond is the name of Jesus Christ for you. Jesus died for you. Why? Because He loves you. It doesn't matter how low in sin you've fallen. It doesn't matter the habits, the addictions. If you've had a divorce, if you got caught in adultery and fornication, no matter how low you've fallen, there's no sin God can't forgive. There's no sin God won't forgive. All you have to do is get on your knees and cry out to Him and confess it and repent of it and turn around and put your faith in the only object of faith that matters and that is Christ and what He did in His finished work on Calvary. The whole Bible points to one thing, the climax of history, the cross, the cross, the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is where you you can cross over the finish line. The cross of Christ is how you can cross out of addiction, out of bondage, out of sin, out of death, into life. And into life more abundantly. So if you have your Bible today, turn with me to, I think, possibly the greatest text anywhere in the Word of God. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. And we're going to begin with the 16th verse. And I'm not the speaker in the service today. <laughs> I have been replaced. I'm out of the picture. Fade to black. Because I don't matter. The speaker today is the blood of Jesus Christ. In the book of Hebrews, it says the blood speaks. The blood speaks. The blood speaks. What does the blood say? It's God saying, I love you. I love you. And I sent my son to die for you. The blood. The blood speaks volumes. The blood speaks more than your sins or your failures or your habits or your addiction. The blood. So today, it's the blood. Hallelujah. And that's all I really want to know. And Peter and Paul and James and John, the apostles, were the same way. I preach at Evangelist Mike Dial the same thing that the apostles taught 2,000 years ago. Praise God. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 15. Oh, let's read. Let's start with 13. I... I I hate taking things out of context. I like to read the context. If you take things out of the context and yank it, make a pretext, it's going, <laughs> it's going to cause a cult. So let's take it in context instead of being a con. You know, like some of the preachers who yank it out of context? No. So 13 is the context. And Peter says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Some of y'all need to hear that. People write to me all the time, Brother Mike, I can drink as long as I don't get drunk. No, you can't. No, you can't, because the Bible teaches 100% sobriety. And one drink, one, one illegal drug, one addictive drug, narcotic drug, you, you lose your sobriety. No, it says be sober. Wake up, wake up, wake up, and be sober. Listen to me. And hope to the end for the grace that's to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus. As obedient children, no longer fashioning yourself, people today follow fads. And they follow trends and they follow styles of the world and they're worldly, but they don't know the word. According to the former lusts in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so be holy. We need more preaching on holiness. All manner of conversation. That means communication. How you talk. Clean up how you talk. We need more preaching today on holiness. We need to get back to holiness and away from Hollywood. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And if you call on the Father who without respect of persons judges everyone according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear. People write me all the time and say, Brother Mike, you should respect my religion. Why? Why should I respect your doo-doo religion? It's all about what you do instead of what he did on the cross. My faith is not what I do. 
If my faith is in the works of my hands, if my faith is in the works of my hands, if my faith is in the works of my hands, then I'll split hell wide open. Jesus said, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. And the greatest iniquity of all is the iniquity, the sin of religion that you have to repent of to be saved. Amen. God doesn't respect persons. It says four, five, six times in the New Testament. God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't respect false religion. So why should I? If God's not a respecter of persons, why should I be? Not one time in the New Testament does it say I should respect your religion or respect you. I respect only one. I call only one Father, and that's God Almighty. God Almighty. Jehovah Yahweh. Adonai El Shaddai, the creator and the possessor of heaven and earth. To him alone do I bow. And we said all that to get to verse 18. For as much as you know, that's positive, that you were not redeemed or bought back from the slave market. That's what redemption means, being bought out of slavery into freedom. You were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. And that's why Peter said on the day of Pentecost, he said, silver and gold have I none. Silver and gold. In today's world, it would be money. He's, this, this is just a prop. The, I wish I was this rich. I'm <laughs> just kidding. This was given to me by, by a donor as a prop. As a prop. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Lucre. L-U-C for Lucifer. Filthy lucre. Lucifer's filthy lucre. The love of money is the root of all evil. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise and walk. And here he calls it corruptible things, silver and gold. And from your vain conversation, your aimless conduct, received by tradition of your fathers. That's how you're not saved. That's how you don't get saved by religion and by tradition and by sacraments. And by the sacrifice of the mass, you don't get saved by the former Virgin Mary. You get saved by the one who's still a virgin. He's still a virgin. The virgin born, son of almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Listen, the answer to Ukraine, the answer to World War Three, the answer to gun violence, the answer to gang violence is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. His name is is Jesus Christ and he was pierced on the cross so this world can have peace and we will not have peace until we turn to the Prince of Peace and the peace of God that passes all understanding rules in our hearts and lives and here's how you have peace with God verse 19 here's how you are saved he says but with the precious with the precious blood of Jesus with the precious blood of Jesus, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. The reason Jesus could hang and bleed and die on that cross is because he was sinless. Hallelujah. He was without spot. He was the spotless lamb. And he fulfilled every messianic prophecy of the Old Testament. From Genesis all the way to Malachi. Glory to God. He fulfilled it. Who verily, verse 20, was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest, manifest, manifest in these last times for you. I want to talk to you today on a simple title. It may be the simplest title that I've ever titled one of my sermons. The Precious Blood of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Father, as we approach your holy, inspired, anointed infallible and inerrant word today. We ask that the blood would speak. Oh God! Oh God, I pray! Oh God, I pray I would speak as the oracles of God! Oh God, I pray that I would speak as the oracles of God! God, anoint these lips of clay. God, make my tongue the pen like the pen of a ready writer. And we will dedicate, consecrate, and commit ourselves to you and give you the glory for everything said, done, and wrought in the service. God, I'm asking you to draw. 
men and women, boys and girls, teenagers, young adults, young professionals, to the bleeding side of Calvary. And we ask it in Jesus' name. I hold up this book because my godly uncle, who teaches and preaches and disciples and shepherds and bishops on TikTok every day, wrote the book. You can get it on Amazon. You can order it on Amazon. It might be the only product on Amazon that I ever recommend. <laughs> Serious. Oh, you know, we don't need Amazon. We need amazing grace. We don't need Amazon. We need an awesome God. We don't need Jeff Bezos. We need the Bible. But look, I think he's got one product <laughs> that I can recommend. And that's my uncle's book, The Oracles of God. And also, not only get the book, he's written many books, get, get the books, but also... Follow Daryl Dial. If you follow Evangelist Mike Dial on TikTok, and I thank God that uh, 45,000 plus of you, glory to God, we've added over 15,000 new followers in the last two weeks. Glory be to God. I'm asking all 45,000 plus of y'all that follow me and enjoy, or maybe you hate me, but you... <laughs> You still follow me for, for whatever reason. I'm glad you do because I love every one of you. Also, I am serious. Also follow my uncle. It's at Daryl Dial Zero. That's at Daryl, and it's two L's. Don't use the B here. Just Daryl, two L's, dial, lowercase, lowercase, zero. Follow Daryl Dial Zero on TikTok because all y'all new converts and all y'all that have just gotten saved or maybe you've known the Lord for many, many years and you need a refresher course. We need base, basic Bible teaching and basic Bible instruction so we're not deceived, deluded, and seduced in these last days. Amen. Amen. So we speak as the oracles of God. We don't speak for a denomination. We don't speak for a religion. We don't speak for a church. We speak as the oracles of God. I act as God's attorney. Now, God hasn't broken the law. God hasn't sinned. But an attorney is an advocate. I advocate for God. An attorney is a representative. I represent God. An attorney argues for his client. I argue from God for God. But not only am I God's attorney, <laughs> I'm also God's ambassador. Paul, writing to the Corinthians, said that we as believers are to act as ambassadors for God, beseeching the world, be reconciled to God. I've been preaching in Washington at all these national embassies, right across the Potomac River, right over here a few miles, to the Russian embassy, the Ukraine embassy, the China embassy, the Israel embassy, the Iraq embassy. We've been taking the word of God to the streets, taking the word of God to, to the embassies. I, I, I act as God's ambassador, God's spokesman, God's press secretary. I speak for God. I represent God as a prophet of God. I address you in the name of God. But it's, it's more than that. I'm not just God's attorney attorney and God's ambassador. It's deeper than that. I'm his son. I'm his son. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Amen. <laughs> and now back to my text. I just wanted to throw that in a little bit. We are redeemed. How? Pop quiz by the precious blood of of Jesus. God has only one way. There's not two ways. There's not three ways. There's not a plan B. There's not a backup plan. There is one way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to God but by me. Now, I want to I emphasize something, though. It wasn't the teaching of Jesus, and he was a great teacher. It wasn't even the preaching of Jesus. And he was a great preacher, the greatest ever. It wasn't his miracles, his healings, his casting out devils, his acts of charity, the feeding of the 5,000. None of all of that was great, wonderful and good, but none of that can save. None of that can save. It was his vicarious, substitutionary, atoning death on the cross, on the cross, on the cross that can save. And that is what we 
we're to preach and that's the reason Paul told the Corinthians I don't want to know anything save Jesus Christ and him crucified why because he said the logos or the message of the cross is to them who perish foolishness they don't get it but unto us who are saved it is the power it is the power it is the power the power of God the power over sin power over sickness power over Satan and power over spiritual death I want to just give you I'm not going to preach very long today the Holy Spirit doesn't need two hours to say what he wants to say today this is going to be a quick work Number one, the blood knows. The blood knows. The blood speaks, the blood knows. Well, what does the blood of Jesus know? And understand, God is omniscient. He knows more than Google. Hallelujah. God knows more than Google. He knows everything. You can't run from him. You can't hide from him. You can be like Jonah and go down in the well. You can run into the arms of Bathsheba. But you, you can be like Samson and run into the arms of Delilah. You can run. You can run. You can run. You can run. But you can't hide. Why? Because the blood knows. What does the blood know? The blood knows the depth and the depravity of our sin. God knows. God sees. And God knows. Now, a lot of y'all are feeling something maybe you've never felt or you haven't felt in a long time. It's called conviction. The conviction of sin. Most preachers don't preach repentance and sin and conviction. But Jesus said, and what he said is what matters. Jesus said, when the Spirit of God comes, he will convict the world of sin. Listen to me. That's what you're feeling. He's convicting you of your sin. You want to cry. You want to weep. You want to wail. That's God. You feel sorry. That's true repentance. That's godly sorrow. That works repentance not to be repented of. To convict the world of sin, of righteousness. You need to be righteous. The scripture says if you come to Christ, and you can be a new creature. And then you can become, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, the righteousness of God in Christ. Convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of judgment, meaning if you reject the gospel that I preach, and my gospel is a deal only a fool would reject. But if you play the fool, if you play the, the troll and you scroll away and you don't listen and you refuse and reject and rebel, then judgment is coming. Judgment day is coming. But you don't have to be judged. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to die lost. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. But friend of mine, don't die in your sin. I beg you, be reconciled to God. I speak as God's attorney. I speak as God's ambassador. And I speak as a son of God. Be reconciled to God. I don't beg for money. But I beg for souls. I don't plead for money. But I plead for souls. The blood knows. Now, number two. Not only does the blood know, the blood shows. I don't have a TV show. I'm not doing this thing for dough and to become famous and to become a celebrity and a personality. No. There's only one show for me. And that's when Jesus made a show of them openly. That's what Paul said happened at the cross. The cross was a blowout. And Paul said that Jesus triumphed over principalities and powers. And he made a, he made a show. He made a show. He made a show openly. And the Bible said that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. How? By death. By his blood on the cross. He destroyed the one who had the power of death. That is the devil. The blood shows. What does the blood show? The blood shows the endless love, grace, mercy, and compassion of a holy God. Now your sin has separated you from God. And there's a gulf and there's a divide between you and God. But you can be reconciled. You can come back. The Bible said Paul writing, he said there's one God, not a million gods. One God. You're not a God. I'm not a God. 
one God and one and only mediator between God and man, the man. The, I'm telling you about the man. That's not Joe Burrow. Glory to God. It's not the guy from the other team, Matthew Stafford. No, the man, Christ Jesus. It's not Donald Trump. It's not Joe Biden. It's the man. Christ Jesus, one mediator. It means a go-between. It means he can bring you back no matter how far you've fallen. He can bring you back. The blood shows. The blood shows what Jesus did on the cross. Now, real briefly, real quickly, I'm going to take you on a little survey of the Old Testament. Amen? The New Testament re reveals and fulfills the Old. Go with me to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, just a real brief detour here. Exodus chapter 12, in the great story of the Passover, it is the Lord's Passover. Verse 12 of chapter 12, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. You see, the wages of sin is death. But if you believe in the cross, you never have to experience the wages of sin. Because He's your sacrifice. He's your substitute. Glory to God. He made intercession for you. Both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now verse 13. And the blood. I'm preaching about the blood. I'm preaching about the blood shall be to you for what? A token upon the houses where you are. And listen to this and get ready to shout. And when I see the blood... When I see the blood, I'm just singing the scripture. When I see the blood, see it for yourself. I will pass, verse 13, I will pass over you. And I'm going to teach you a new song now. Come on now. When I see the blood. When I, this is God singing to you. See the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. The only way to have your sin washed away, the only way to have your sin blotted out, the only way for you to be right with God is the way of the precious, poured out, propitiating blood of Jesus Christ. That's God's provision. That's God's power. That's God's purpose. The pain of the cross. Listen. 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 The blood is speaking. Saying it's time for you to fall on your knees and get right with God. The blood is speaking. Don't put it off. Today is the day of salvation. You hear it? Tick tock. Tick tock. The clock is ticking. And the Bible said it is appointed to man once to die. Not many times in an imagined reincarnation. No, but once to die. And after that, what the judgment. And Jesus said there's two resurrections. One to life and one to death. You can deny it all you want. But Jesus was a hellfire and brimstone preacher. Jesus was a preacher of repentance. Jesus said, except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. And I'll make no apologies. I'm not an apologist. I'm an apostle. I'm not an apologist. Glory to God. I'm an evangelist. The blood shows. Go to Leviticus. Go to Leviticus chapter 17. In your Bible, Leviticus chapter 17. Hallelujah. Some of y'all, you're new Christians. You don't know Leviticus from Deuteronomy. Well, you need to learn your Bible. Leviticus chapter 17, and I'm going to help teach you. Praise the Lord. That's why I'm here. Leviticus 17, verse 11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. It is the blood. It is the blood. Listen, Buddhists. You have no blood. It is the blood. Listen, Jews. You have no blood. Listen, Muslims. You have no blood. It is the blood. It, listen, Mormons. Listen, Jehovah Witnesses. Listen, Pentecostals and Protestants and Baptists. It is the blood that makes an atonement 
for the soul. Atonement makes you at one with God. At one with God. It reconciles. You were lost, but you found. It's the atonement. And now verse 14. For it's the life of all the flesh, the blood of it, for the life thereof. Therefore I said to the children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The precious blood, physical blood, atones for souls, uh, spirits of sinners. A spiritual sacrifice is not necessary. It is a physical sacrifice. There's a lot of false teaching today. There's a lot of false teaching and false teachers saying it was Jesus' spiritual suffering in Gehenna where he burned and was made one with the devil and was tormented by demons and devils and evil spirits and then he had to be born again. That is a lie. That is a blasphemous abomination. It is a lie. No. It was his physical death on the cross. Read Paul. Read Corinthians. Read Colossians. Read Ephesians. Read Eph Philippians. Read First and Second Peter. First, Second, and Third John. It, it, it says, if Jesus came in the flesh and died in the flesh, then Jesus is Lord. It, it is his physical atoning blood. It is his physical sacrifice. You need to reject the Gnostic heresy that spiritualizes all that and reject every Gnostic preacher and listen only to those of us who preach the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm about to get happy and preach today. Hallelujah. Number one, the blood knows. Number two, the blood shows. Number three, the blood flows. <laughs> I was up on Capitol Hill preaching not too long ago. Some of y'all saw the video. As I was up on Capitol Hill with the Capitol Dome behind me, I didn't plan to do it. It came to me about five minutes before I started preaching. The Lord said, get up on Capitol Hill and take Capitol Hill to Calvary's Hill. Take Capitol Hill to Calvary's Hill. Take the White House and make it the church house. And I stood up there and I sang, On a hill. Far away <laughs> stood an old rugged cross. Hallelujah, Capitol Hill has no answers for America. The White House has no answers. The answer comes from one place, and that is the hill called Calvary. The cross of Jesus Christ. The blood flows. How does the blood flow? The blood flows constantly, always and perpetually. The blood flows to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. The blood flows wherever you goes. I said the blood flows wherever you goes, and you can't get away from it. Jesus said, I didn't say it, Buddha didn't say it, Mary didn't say it, Muhammad and Matreya and the angel moron, I didn't say it. Jesus said it, Confucius didn't say it. Harry Christ didn't say it. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even to the end of the age. Oh, hallelujah. It's always there. And all you have to do is whisper a prayer and say, Jesus, wash me in your precious blood. And when you say a prayer, He's always there. Oh, I'm about to shout. I'm sorry, Southern Baptist, if I offend you. But hallelujah. Glory to God. You can, you know, this afternoon, I don't know when you're watching this. The Super Bowl may be over. But I'm preaching on Super Sunday. And football doesn't make Sunday super. Faith, faith, faith makes Sunday super. Hallelujah. But they can get excited about a ball. They can get excited about, I wish I had a football here to throw. They can get excited about throwing a ball. They can stand and they can shout and they can say, Go Joe Burrow! And yell and scream and shout and get excited. So why can't I do it for Jesus? Why can't I do it for Jesus? I can, I do, and I will. The blood flows. I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. And this is one of my favorite scriptures anywhere. <laughs> and I, I, do, I, I, I have such emotion right now. If it's real, you're going to feel it. God, deliver us from dead, cold traditional, ritualistic, denominational religion. God, deliver us 
and bring us to the power of Pentecost, to the power of Calvary. I was preaching over at the Pentagon this week, right over there, right over there. I was preaching at the Pentagon, and I said, while I was looking at the Pentagon, some of y'all saw the video, I said, the power that can save this world is not the power of the Pentagon or the power of the presidency. It is the power of Pentecost. It is the power of Almighty God. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb at Calvary? Oh, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me, oh, there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Hebrews 9, 27, almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Listen. Everyone in the world, 600,000 of you, over 603,000 of you, watched my video from New York Harbor when I stood on that boat in New York Harbor and I thundered my voice as a trumpet and said, Thus saith the Lord, I am giving last call to America. And God gave his two-minute warning. And here's what he says today. The blood speaks. Thus saith the Lord. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. You don't believe it's in the Bible? Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Verse 22 right there. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no redemption without blood. There is no revival without blood. There is no restitution or restoration without blood. There is no regeneration without blood. God has one way. And it is the blood sacrifice. It is the blood sacrifice. God has one way. I want just to let that just sink in for a moment. That God has only one way. People try to have another way. Jesus said there's a narrow way. Narrow way. And, and few are on the narrow way. The straight and the narrow. You've got to walk the line. Like Johnny Cash. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. Johnny Cash. I keep my eyes wide open all the time. I keep the ends out for the tie that bind because you're mine. I walk the line. Well, that's how it got to be with God. You walk the line. You walk the straight and narrow with the world. I was just up in New York. Some of y'all saw my video from Broadway as I'm standing there on the Times Square telling the world, telling America, it's time to get right with God. We're over at Rockefeller Center telling that every richest man in the world is now in hell. There is a Broadway, and the world is trying to narrow Broadway. The world of religion, oh, just na broaden, broaden, broaden the narrow way. Broadway, in, in, inclusive, tolerant, and all this kind of... No, 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 no. Jesus said, I didn't say it. Jesus said, it's a narrow way. Now, are you calling Jesus a liar? How dare you call it? It's Jesus who said, it's a narrow way. Not Evangelist Mike Dial. Don't send your mail and your complaints to Evangelist Mike Dial. Send it to Jesus. Take it up with Jesus. For the Jesus who's being preached today from the mega church and media church pulpits is not the Jesus of the Bible. It's another Jesus. It's a different Jesus. It's a fake Jesus, a fraud Jesus, a fairy tale Jesus, a fictitious Jesus, and a fantasy Jesus. Not the Jesus of the Bible. The blood knows, the blood shows, the blood flows. And number four, the blood goes. The blood goes. And, and where, where does the blood go? <laughs> well, the blood goes anywhere and everywhere that you are. <laughs> you know, 
Let's go back to the book of beginnings. Adam and Eve. Adam blew it. Adam blew it. Eve blew it. Adam blew it. <laughs> they believed the lie of Lucifer, you shall be as gods. They ate the forbidden fruit. I don't know what kind of tree it was. The Bible doesn't say. They always say it was an apple because that's where the term, Ad I don't have a very pronounced Adam's apple. Some people do. So I'm not saying it was an apple, but you know, <laughs> an apple, an apple caused the world to fall. We're just saying it's an apple tree. I don't know what kind of tree it was. But an apple caused the world to fall so long ago. And today, high tech, Apple, Amazon, AT&T, Alphabet, Google are causing the world to fall again. We are more in love with our screens from Samsung than we are with the word of Almighty God. I'm not going to dwell too much on that today, except to say they made that decision to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and that caused them to fall. Now today, shoot forward many thousands of years, today it's knowledge, amen, information, technology, data, and analytics that Satan is using to distract people from the Bible. What do you mean, Brother Mike? I mean, you'd rather be on this thing. You'd rather be on this thing from Samsung, from Verizon, from Apple. You'd rather be on this thing in the screens than you would reading the Scriptures. You're more visual and virtual and video with vices than you are about hearing verses. And reading verses. Now that's the absolute truth. And so Satan is using the information superhighway, the technology revolution, to distract people from the Bible. And it is the tree of the knowledge. The tree of the... See, all knowledge is not God's knowledge. Somebody said, Brother Mike, God gave me a brain. I gotta use it. Look, listen, if you've ever listened to a preacher before, yeah, God gave you a brain, but he didn't originally intend for you to sin with it. How many of y'all saw my video on God's law of original intent? God's intent from the brain was to obey God and to fear God. When I made that video from New York, I wasn't shaking in fear of myself. I was shaking in fear of America as in one hour, so great riches shall be made not. So Adam sinned. Get back to my, to my, to my story. And he ran from God, and he had been naked, clothed with the glory of God. But now he's naked and unclothed, and he hews together a branch from the fig tree, and he puts a fig leaf around himself. That's man-made religion. That's the works of your hands. And God sees nothing but leaves. He doesn't see, God wants to see fruit, but he sees nothing but leaves. Your religion is the works of your hands. You gotta repent of the works of your hands. You gotta repent of your idols, your images and icons. The world is idol makers today. The world is image makers and icon makers. And they love their likenesses more than they love being Christ-like. And the Bible said that God came down in the cool of the day. And he knew where Adam was. He knows everything. He's omniscient. But sometimes he talks to us on our level and he said, Where art thou, Adam? Adam was running. Where are trying to cover himself with his man-made religion, his works? Like the vegetable offering of Cain. Where art thou, Adam? And finally, God encountered him. And God, simply to make a long story short, taught him the art of blood sacrifice. That your fig leaves are not enough. Your works are not enough. It has to be the blood. As Delway wrote and sang, Only the blood 
Only the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. Oh, the blood. Sing it with me. Of Jesus. That's music you can worship to. Oh, the blood. Of Je it's the blood. It's the blood. And the blood is the answer to the flood. The blood is the answer to the fire. The blood is the answer to the plague and the pandemic. The blood is the answer to World War Three and inflation and border crisis and Afghanistan. The blood. The blood. Jesus is still. Your only answer. The blood goes. And number five, the blood grows. The blood grows. The blood grows. You see, God doesn't shrink. God hadn't died and fallen off the throne. That's why we magnify God. He's constantly growing. He's a big God's a big God. Ask big. Jimmy Swaggart's grandma uh, told Jimmy Swaggart that when he was knee high to a grasshopper. He said, God, is, she said, God is a big God. So ask big. God, a growing God, a big God, a big God. The blood grows. How does the blood grow? It grows even and ever larger in scope and magnitude and dominion all the time. Paul writing to the Ephesians, I think it's chapter 3, he speaks of the love of God. He speaks of the love of God and he says, the blood. He talks of the length and the height and the depth of the love of God. And in chapter 1, he prays that you, would, your spirit would be enlightened so you would know the exceeding greatness, the exceeding greatness, the exceeding greatness of his power, of his power to the praise of the glory of your grace. It's not to praise you or praise a man. It's to praise God. And the Lord said an hour will come and an hour is when the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. And I'm going to close with point number six. Number one, the blood knows. Aren't you glad it does? If you don't know your sin, you can't repent. Number two, the blood shows. The blood shows God's only way, the way of the cross. Number three, the blood flows. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever you are. Four, the blood goes. Five, the blood grows. And sixth and finally, and this is my favorite point, <laughs> and this is shouting ground, the blood chose. <laughs> he chose me. He chose me. I don't know why. I don't know why. There's a song I hear all the time. I don't know the, the author of the song, but I've heard it. And it's, and it's, he knows my name everywhere that I go. He knows my name. And there's another one. He called my name. He called my, aren't you glad Joe Biden may not know my name? I hope he does. Because I was over there preaching to him this week. I hope he knows who Evangelist Mike Dial is. Mr. President, let me introduce yourself. Let me introduce myself to you. My name is Mike Dial. I hope you know my name. I hope you know my name. But it, but it doesn't really matter because Almighty oh, God, Almighty oh, God, Almighty oh, God, the Creator and Possessor of Heaven and Earth, He knows my name and He called my name, bless God. Woo! Hallelujah! I was over there preaching my heart out this week at the White House. I didn't get an appointment. I didn't get an appointment to come into the Oval Office. But you know what? If I bow my knees and I whisper the name and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I am immediately transported in the Spirit to the throne of Almighty God. And God outranks Joe Biden. The blood chose. It chose you. It chose me. It chose you, and it chose me. Somebody said, somebody said that an adopted child receives more love and more special attention from parents 
than a natural born child. There's a lot of wisdom there. I don't know if that's true, but there's a lot of wisdom there. My parents, you know, they had me, but they had me. <laughs> and if, if I'd have come out a serial killer, well, okay. But when a child is adopted, oh my, it means he was chosen. Now, all of us ultimately were, as a human race, were created by God. But the human race fell. We already talked about Adam and Eden and Eve. In Eden, an original sin, the sin nature came. But as the creator, God gave man the gift of what's called procreation. And so God created us perfect. There was no sin, there was no sickness, no poverty. But then we fell as a human race and all kind of bad things through genetics and DNA. But you see, God gets blamed for that. But it's not his fault. God created man perfect. Man chose to sin. God, at that point, could have destroyed everybody and started over. He didn't do that. My text said, the, the, la the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the earth. The precious blood before you were born, before you were a twinkle in your mama and daddy's eyes, in the mind of God, Jesus had already died for you. A million years ago, a trillion years ago, Jesus had already died for you. That is the love of God. Oh, the love of God. He chose. He chose to leave the splendor of glory and become a man in the incarnation and live 33 years without sinning in thought, word, or deed and allow himself to be hung on a cross and bleed and die for your sins and be buried and be risen from the dead. Why? He chose you because he loves you. Hallelujah. Every head bowed. Every eye closed to the glory of God. I don't need a fancy invitation. I don't need, with this sermon, the anointing was, I don't have to beg. I don't have to plead. I don't have to sit up here and say, just as I am without one. No, 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 no. We're going we're to sing. We're going to sing. There's room at the cross. For you, for you, FYP, TikTok for you, there's room at the cross for you. <laughs> the whole millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Bow. And say, dear God, forgive me of my sin. I repent of my sin. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Remember me. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. That God hears your prayer. God hears your prayer. And I just want to, I want to make it final. I want, to make, I want you to pray this and mean it and mean it and mean it and mean it with all your heart. Say, dear God in heaven. I believe Jesus died for me on the cross. He paid the price to you that I couldn't pay. I believe he was buried and I believe he was resurrected and he's alive. Now right now, <laughs> Father, I ask Jesus to come into my life. I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. That means I give you my life, all of it. Hallelujah. Be Lord today tomorrow and forever. I dedicate, consecrate, commit myself to you. Father, I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven among the angels when one sinner repents. Now, I don't know about you. But I've had the time of my life today. I, I absolutely think that God poured out his spirit and the spirit of God is flowing and the river of God hallelujah I can feel it right it's flowing glory to God and right now while there's no sin between you and God
Everything's under the blood. It's time to be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I lay hands on you right now for healing and for deliverance spiritually. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now, I anoint you with oil spiritually. Somebody said, what are you saying, Brother Mike? I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying my heavenly prayer language to God. I'm talking to God. Hallelujah. But, 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 but as a prophet of God, he allows me to interpret. And this is what he says. God says, I'm here right now. I'm here right now. Don't fear. Don't fear. Don't fear. I'm near. I'm here to heal you. And in Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Hand up a key, not from Evangelist Mike Dow, from God Almighty, the anointing of the cross and the blood right now. Cancer, be gone. COVID-19, be gone and be rebuked. Blood disease, brain disease, heart disease, sugar diabetes, hypertension, and all manner of sickness and disease. I break your power by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the blood, and by the power of the blood, I cast out every devil. I rebuke every devil. And I command every familiar spirit, religious spirit, spirit of infirmity, spirit of fear, to come out of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke pornography. I rebuke nicotine, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, illicit and prescription. In the name of Jesus, video game addiction, tech addiction, be free. Be free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've been saved, healed, delivered today, send in, my, send in your testimony to my comments page. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I don't talk about money offerings. I don't beg for it. But I do receive offerings, donations, and contributions one way through my Venmo. There are other ways if you contact me, but the way that I would prefer is through my Venmo, Venmo at Evangelist Mike Dial. Capitalize the E for Evangelist, the M for Mike, the D for Dial, Evangelist Mike Dial. It doesn't go to me. I work pro bono, but it goes to the outreach ministry to win souls. And I don't promise a return, a harvest, a blessing, abundance. That's between you and God. But I believe God's leading tens of thousands of you to support us and please obey God. Secondly, pastors, preachers, this kind of preaching, this kind of revival can be in your in-person brick and mortar pulpits. I will come postage paid free of charge. You have not because you ask not. Please invite me to speak at your church, your camp meeting, your convention, your conference under a tree, under a tent. I don't care. I don't have to pray about it. The Lord said when I was 16, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> You're a preacher. <laughs> You're a preacher. I'm a preacher. I'll come. You have not because you asked not. I have enjoyed this so much. Please be with me tomorrow. Follow Evangelist Mike Dow on TikTok. Go back in my archives whoop, and watch all of them. There's over a thousand of them. I've never counted them. Watch them all. I love you. I love you. I love you. And remember, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen.